Now, in a previous video, I talked a little bit about the notion of evaluation and interpretation functions in the semantics of the language of propositional logic. Here, I'll talk more about the interpretation and evaluation function, but I'll do it in a different way and in a more conventional way, I think. So our presentation of the meaning of the symbols and well-formed formulas in the language of propositional logic has essentially evolved specifying two functions. The first function is an interpretation function, and this function assigns truth values, T or F, to the propositional letters, while the valuation function takes those interpretations and uses them to assign truth values, T or F, to complex well-formed formulas. Now, a second and equivalent way of presenting the meaning or the semantics of well-formed formulas is to make use of truth tables. Now, a truth table is simply a graphical display of the interpretation and valuation function. So consider that any propositional letter can be interpreted in two ways. On one interpretation, P can be assigned a value of true, and on another, it can be assigned a value of false. Now we can use the truth table to display these different interpretations. We can simply write P on a line and then below it write two separate rows that indicate that on one interpretation P can be assigned a value of true and on another it can be false. And we can do this for any number of propositional letters. We simply need to take into account all the different ways that these propositional letters can be assigned truth values, that is, the different combinations. So if we had two propositional letters or a formula that involved two, we would need to take into account the four different interpretations, the four different ways that P and Q could be assigned truth values. And so we could have a interpretation that assigned P a value of true and Q a value of true, an interpretation that assigned P a value of true and Q when false, one that assigned, assigned P false and Q true, and one that assigned P false and Q false. So this would cover all of the different ways that we could assign truth values to P and Q. Now what about negated formulas or negated well-formed formulas? Now we know that a negated formula is true if and only if P is false, and a negated formula is false if and only if P is true. That is, so if there are two ways of interpreting P, P is true, and another way, P is false, we can cover, use the truth table to indicate the conditions under which not P is true. So if we interpret P as true, then not P will be false, and if we interpret P as false, then not P will be true. How about the valuation function for conjunctions? Now, the valuation function for a conjunction said that a conjunction is true if and only if P is interpreted as true and R is interpreted as false, and it's false in all other cases. So we can cover the four different ways that P and R can be interpreted, and we can use the truth table to display the conditions under which P and R are true. So if we look at the first row where P and R are true, they're interpreted as true, then the conjunction P and R is also true. In the other cases, let's say P is interpreted as true and R is interpreted as false, as in the second row, then the conjunction P and R is false. And the same thing with the third and fourth row. Since a conjunction P and R is true if and only if both of its conjuncts P and R are true, the only the first row is the row where P and R will be evaluated as true. In all other cases, it will be evaluated as false. In the case of disjunctions, a disjunction P and or R is false if and only if both P is false and R is false. Another way to put this is to say that P or R is true provided one of the disjuncts P or R is true. And we can use a truth table to display, given the different combinations of interpretations, what, how P or R will be evaluated. So if you look at the truth table here, you can go row by row. In the first row, both P and R are interpreted as true, and the result for the truth value for the disjunction P or R is true. 
in the case of rows two and three, notice that either in row two, P is true, but R is false, but the valuation function for P or R says that provided one of the disjuncts is true, th then the whole disjunction, P or R, is true. And the same thing is the case for row three. Now in the case of row four, here is an interpretation where P or R comes out as false because neither of the disjuncts P or R is interpreted as true. In the case of conditionals, P right arrow R is true if and only if P is false or R is true. So we can look at the different ways that P or R and R can be interpreted and go row by row and see that given some interpretation of P and R, this will determine whether or not P right arrow R is true. So in the first row, P and R are both interpreted as true, and the result is that the valuation function says that P right arrow R is true. In row two, P is interpreted as true, and R is interpreted as false. And the valuation function for conditional says that the resulting conditional is false. In the case of rows three and four, given the interpretation specified, the valuation function says that the resulting complex well-formed formula, P right arrow R, is true. Now we'll come back to what P right arrow R means, and I just want to kind of point out that these third and fourth row, especially the third row is somewhat controversial, but I'll cover this in a later video. What's important here is to see what the valuation function is and how a truth table can be used to display both the interpretations and the valuation under specific interpretations. In the case of biconditionals, a biconditional P double arrow R is true provided both P and R share the same truth value. That is, so it's true provided P and R are true, or P and R are false. A truth table can display this as follows. In the first row, notice that P and R are both true, and so the valuation rule for biconditionals says that since P and R are both true, then P double arrow R is also true. Notice that the fourth row, P and R are both false, and the biconditional valuation rule says that the resulting biconditional is also true. However, in the second and third row, notice that P and R don't share the same truth value. In the second row, P is true and R is false. In the third row, P is false and R is true. And so the valuation for biconditional rules, as it's displayed here by the truth table, says that the resulting biconditional, given these interpretations, is false.